New York, the world's premier city, one of the richest and most powerful areas of the planet, and Miami, the jewel of the Sunshine State and supreme example of the American dream. Both are glorious cities, but are threatened by one of nature's most terrifying phenomena that will one day race from across the ocean and engulf the east coast of the United States, the Mega Tsunami. 50 million people live on the Atlantic coast of America, and every person could be in danger. Scientists at University College London are leading the research into the geological time bomb and know full well what we can expect. It will hit with the power of an atomic bomb, effectively, and be travelling at the speed of a jumbo jet, and it will wipe out anything that's uh, not nailed down and many things that are. As they move across the ocean, they uh, spread out and diminish in height, but even so, when they reach the other side of the ocean, they can be several tens of metres high at a distance of thousands of kilometres from the source island. And because they're tsunami waves rather than ordinary waves, they don't just break on the shore, they move inland as very fast moving, very turbulent floods, and they can go up to 20 kilometres in, inland. This would actually have devastating effects once it hit uh, New York, Miami and the Bahamas. Well, it'll be devastating, absolutely devastating. It will take something like eight hours for the wave to travel from the Canaries to the other side of the Atlantic. Um, places like New York, places like uh, Philadelphia, Washington will be hit very, very badly by this. The, Cana the Caribbean islands of the Bahamas, um, which are very low lying, will also be devastated. Um, it's difficult to predict exactly what the, the, the final result will be, but you're talking probably millions dead and massive destruction. The um, mega tsunamis that we're concerned about are anything up to a kilometre high and they're caused by landslides. Tsunamis are giant waves created by earthquakes. As an earthquake occurs, the Earth's surface splits. A shock wave travels through the ocean and is viewed as a tsunami when the wave reaches shore. Most tsunamis are 10 to 20 metres high but can devastate coastal areas. Mega tsunami is much, much more. We're talking here about a chunk of rock about 200 cubic kilometers in size, which is really quite, quite enormous. And secondly, with an earthquake, um, you shake the ocean bed. That's what generates a tsunami with, a, with an earthquake. In this case, you're not shaking the seabed, you're dropping a chunk of rock, a huge chunk of rock into the sea, um, as if you're throwing a rock into a, into a pool and that's much more effective at generating much bigger waves. So it's a completely different mechanism from earthquake-generated tsunami. Simon Day, one of the world's leading geologists, has pinpointed the reason for the waves. The key piece of our research, the key result, is that we've shown that these landslides from volcanoes, which can have volumes of hundreds or even thousands of cubic kilometres, are triggered by volcanic eruptions. As the magma rises within the volcano to trigger the eruption, it starts to push off the flank of the volcano. And the key thing is that the magma, as it's coming up through the volcano, heats up groundwater within the volcano. And the groundwater tries to expand, but it's trapped in the pores in the rock, so it becomes pressurised instead. And this pressure is what pushes off the flank of the volcano into the ocean, where it will generate these mega tsunami waves. Unfortunately for America, the coastline is adding to the disaster. Washington DC and Philadelphia may be crushed because of the shape of the Chesapeake Bay. Tsunami are controlled by the shape of the coastline and by how flat the coastline is. Um, if it's very flat, then these, a wave of that size could easily penetrate in for several kilometers. Um, if you're dealing with a bay or an estuary, then the wave can be focused into that. It can build even higher and push all the way up the river or into the harbor. Um, on the other hand, if you have very high cliffs, then the wave is liable to hit against the cliffs and not travel very far. So it does depend on the very local detail of the coast. Mark Maslin believes the centre of this possible disaster 
is the Cumbre Vieja volcano in the Canary Islands. Well, it seems that we found that um, half the island of La Palma could actually collapse into the ocean, causing a tsunami wave about 600 metres high. And Bill Maguire has delved even deeper. Well, the Canary Islands are volcanoes, they're active volcanoes. Um, these volcanoes periodically collapse to generate gigantic sea waves, tsunami or tidal waves, they're sometimes known. Now, these sorts of events are normally caused by earthquakes, and they tend, the waves tend to be 10 metres high, 15 metres high. But in the Canary Islands, we're dealing with a potential collapse of the island of La Palma, which might generate a wave which is 600 metres, 2,000 feet high to start with. And when it reaches the other side of the Atlantic, it will still be 50 metres or 150 feet high. The United States of America is the world's largest economy, and scientists are working furiously to try and predict when the catastrophe will hit. Smaller uh, volcano collapses have occurred in history. Uh, an example is the collapse of Oshima Oshima off Japan in 1741, which produced a tsunami in the Sea of Japan. But that was quite a small event. The very biggest events, with landslides with volumes of hundreds or thousands of cubic kilometres, occur much more rarely. On the long-term average, over very long periods, they occur about one every 20,000 years. But the trouble is, we think the collapses may occur in groups. When this is what we thought at first, we thought it was one of these uh, geological events that could happen tomorrow, but it's more likely to happen in thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. However, Simon Day and myself found that if you look at the global record of these in the geological history, they always seem to occur during extremely warm periods. Simon Day and Mark Maslin's extensive research has led them to a startling fact. The entire catastrophic chain of events is caused by one of the most common elements on the planet, water. When the groundwater levels within the volcanoes are high, during warm and humid climate periods, the collapses are more likely to occur. And we're living in one of these periods now. Since the last ice age, the climate has been warm and relatively humid. In this case of the Canary Islands, it's a very specialised um, area. And what happens is that uh, it's water. And water is the key element that actually could cause this mountain to collapse. What happens is rainwater, if it falls into the centre of the island, actually collects uh, in between the solid, impermeable dikes that have been put in there by previous eruptions. And if you have another eruption and all this heat rises, the water actually expands. And as we know, if you heat water, it expands greatly, and literally the island will just snap apart, causing half of it to fall off. Unfortunately, the Earth is going through a warm period right now. But what is the probability of this event actually occurring? Well, the probability is 100%. There's no question that the flank of the Cumbre Vieja volcano, which is the one we're talking about here on La Palma, will collapse. The problem is the timing. Is it going to happen in a few years' time? Is it going to happen in a few thousand years? And these sorts of events have very low frequencies. They happen very, very uh, irregularly and perhaps tens of thousands of years apart, which is why we don't take any notes of them. But that doesn't mean they're not going to happen again. And uh, I think all we can say at the moment is this collapse will probably occur during an eruption if it's an eruption next year or an eruption in a thousand years, we don't know, but it will be, geologically speaking, very soon. Because the scientists are in no doubt that a landslide disaster will burst from La Palma, the University College specialists are preparing for the worst. And this fact that the collapses are linked to the eruptions means that we can predict the mega tsunami by monitoring the eruptions. And a period of any of weeks or even months can be involved where the flank of the volcano is being pushed by the magma and by the groundwater pressure is beginning to move and the scientists monitoring the eruption will be able to predict that a collapse might be about to occur anything up to weeks or months in advance. And this would allow evacuation of coastal areas, even on the other side of the ocean, that would be affected by the tsunami. Well, we can't stop them. I mean, that's clear. The, the energies involved are gigantic. But if you're looking, for example, at La Palma, we suspect that there will be an eruption before the collapse occurs. So if the volcano starts to erupt, then you can increase monitoring on the side of the volcano, see if it's starting to slip, if it's increasing its slide rate. If it looks as if there's going to be a problem, then you get people out in the United States, you move them inland. I mean, there are hurricanes, there have been hurricanes recently, where a million or two million people have been evacuated from American cities on the East Coast. 
But what can we really do in the worst case scenario? You can model the uh, how that tsunami is going to impact when it hits the coast. So you can do research beforehand and say that's what's going to be bad there, bad there, bad there, uh, which hasn't been done yet, uh, and get people out from those areas. But to be absolutely honest, the whole area, the whole of the eastern United States is going to be affected to some extent. So it does rely on, on knowing or getting some idea when this collapse is going to occur and really moving people out. Something has to be done if you're going to reduce what would otherwise be an enormous, an enormous death toll. Although this is one of nature's most devastating phenomena, mankind is helping the process along because of pollution. The key thing is that we found that to get rain into the centre of the island, you need very warm sea surface temperatures. Because at the moment, if you go to the Canary Islands, it's very dry on the beaches, you go up the hill, beautiful rainforest, and the centre is desert. Now, if you heat up the oceans, and we've seen this in the past, the actual cloud layer and the heat exported rises and then it will float much higher over the island causing rain to actually fall into the centre. We have evidence um, that global warming is causing sea surface temperature to rise but we also have evidence from around the world that that cloud layer is actually rising. Planetary temperature increases are not only melting the polar ice caps but could be leading to Earth's worst natural disaster. Global warming could actually put water into the centre of the volcano and mean that we have a precursor and next eruption could cause it to fail. In terms of what do I think is going to be the next global natural catastrophe, I'd put the collapse of La Palma top of the list. Well, it started to slide in 1949. It's something that's happening, it's ongoing. It's, it's not something we're waiting to happen. It's, it started in 1949. It looks as if it might be sliding still about a centimetre a year. All we're waiting for is a final crash into the sea. These collapses are more likely to occur at present than on the long-term average. And there are a number of volcanoes that we're concerned about that are showing signs of precursory instability and that may be particularly likely to collapse during an eruption in the near future.